It's 2020, year of the murder hornet and the Rona. Right now, we had many people who were dancing with the devil. They were messing around. There are a whole bunch of folks who don't believe the Rona is real. So they're going out, living their lives, going to the parties, and essentially you're seeing report after report, 16 people went to this party all tested positive for the Rona. And I think America has made this unconscious deal to dance with the devil. Rona, Rona, I don't care, I'm gonna live my life. This is the consensus that many people have made. Uh, on Facebook, there are so many posts, there are people, I don't even get into it, who clearly believe the Rona is a hoax. They believe that this thing was overblown. They think this thing was just totally unacceptable. So I don't even get into it because I can tell by their posts, like this whole thing, like this, this debate, wearing a rice, wearing a mask is infringing on your constitutional rights. That's kind of like saying wearing a seatbelt is infringing on your constitutional rights. Seatbelt is a prophylactic measure, but you, right now we got people who are going crazy and we got people who are dancing with the devil. And as I had predicted that the states with the high infection rates, that's the infection rates were going to skyrocket. And right now, many of the countries are looking at the United States side out. They're like, hey, y'all let this Rona get out of control. We're not going to allow any of your citizens to enter our country. I want you to think about that. United States of America, essentially, if you're a citizen of the United States of America and you hold a passport, that gains you entry into 180 credits for up to 180 countries for up to three months. That was the case. During this global reset, you're going to see that many of rights that were afforded to American citizens are about to be rescinded. You, once again, this whole thing, I think is part of the new world order. I think Trump was picked to be the appropriate pawn for the fall of America. Yeah, I said that because the thing is, he's like, hey, if you do more testing, you're going to find more Rona, right? And then they're taking money away from testing initiatives. I want you to really think about this. Like right now, we have many states where the Rona is surging. Yet we're going to reduce money for testing. That doesn't make sense unless it's part of a grand design to hurt America. I'm 100% convinced that this is part of a grand scheme to take some of the teeth out of America. Because right now, we have this mask on, mask off civil war. Right now, we have high unemployment. Unemployment is still going up. Right now, we have people who are, don't know what to do. They're just seriously like, what am I gonna do? Then you have a group of people who are well positioned, their incomes are not gonna disappear. They're buying houses. They're out here competing with these folks. Many folks are dancing with the devil and they hope that Satan doesn't stick them with the horns. Because many folks have made the determination that I am going to live my life. I'm gonna do what I need to do. I'm gonna be out here doing what I need to do to move my life forward. I'm going to be doing what I need to do to secure my liberty. And then we have another group of people who have danced with the devil and the devil has written them a contract and the devil's cast in, cashed in the contract. Like these folks who are unemployment, because I keep talking about unemployment for a reason. With the massive closure of businesses, and this is going to contribute to the high unemployment rate. Just keep your eye on the number of businesses that are permanently closing and how this fuels the high level of unemployment. Amazon is going to, Amazon put out that they were going to hire 100,000 people. 100,000 people, good for Amazon. But when you have like in the month of June, 
we had 7 million people laid off. And I'm waiting for the announcement because since the states are opening, some of the people who were on unemployment, they've gone back to work. I'm waiting on this announcement where unemployment is going to be like 10%. I, I, I'm almost expecting it because it's an election year, man. Another devil that you're dancing with is the Democrats and the Republicans because they're going to lie to you to get your vote. The Democrats have been playing their hand. They're like, hey, America, we, we want to give you a super generous stimulus proposal of $2,000 per month. If you married, $2,000 for you, if $2,000 for your husband, and $2,000 for each child. So you can be getting six dollars to $10,000 a month. You know, that's more money than these people ever made in their life. And this is just to pave the way for universal basic income because from this failed experiment, and then there are people who are debating with me that they're going to extend the, they're not going to extend the 600 because the $600 extra per month has proven to been very problematic. And they're not going to extend this because if you got a choice of staying at home on unemployment, and making more money or going to work, mean to speak no English, he don't live here no more. The, these employers are as clear value tax that make yourself inaccessible. They putting on the nose, they putting on the hair, putting on the makeup, the suit and the shoes, these folks are clowning. So it's not going to be extended. But what is one to do other than to dance with the devil? First of all, you need to get your cash position up. I know this is going to be so, I, I don't even know how I'm going to say this, but I'm going to start talking about cryptocurrency. And I know in the past I have warned you guys not to get involved, but once again, with all the madness in the world, with the craziness in the world, people want to be involved in cryptocurrency. So what I'm going to do is link a course that's put out by MIT so you can educate yourself about cryptocurrency. Uh, I'm going to be talking about it on Savage Finance. I'm going to break it down because what is Savage Finance about? Personal finance. As much as I don't like it, Cryptocurrency is a part of personal finance. So if I got a channel about personal finance, I need to talk about all aspects of personal finance, whether from my institutional standpoint, because before you even start messing with cryptocurrency, you, you need your long-term savings account. You need your short-term savings account. You need your family operating account. You need all that before you even start messing with crypto and currency, because I have seen crazy stuff here on Facebook that some dude, his account was about to be overdraft and he wanted to pull $900 to sink into some Bitcoin before his checking account was overdraft, which means he didn't have an emergency fund. He didn't have a long-term nor short-term or he had no money. He was just willing to throw some money into the crypto markets just to see what it's going to do. I, I'm not going to do that. I'm, we're going to talk about having a proper financial house, proper financial structure. But yes, I will be talking about cryptocurrency and I will be talking about the things you can do. So there will be a whole new playlist about cryptocurrency and how can you get a piece of the action. I know that was hard. That was hard. But once again, I live in truth and the people want to be involved in cryptocurrency. Just facts, just the way that it is. So that is coming. That's going to be my dance with the devil, my dancing with Bitcoin and my dance with Travala and my dance with Ethereum and all these other cryptocurrencies, because one of the things that I want to do with Savage Finance is to properly educate you on all aspects of personal finance. And from a truth-based perspective, cryptocurrency 
And I know some people were really shocked to see me talk about stocks and bonds, and I will continue to talk about stocks and bonds because these are elements of personal finance. Except there would be an additional information on how to make more money because this is something that most personal finance channels don't even bring up. It's all about taking the money you have, investing into the market and doing dollar cost averaging and all this other stuff. But even I will be dancing with the devil because from a personal finance perspective, I need to give you information about all aspects of personal finance. And this is something that I've been coming to in the last few months because I'm like, okay, we're going to have to go there. We're going to have to go there because this is one of the things about having a business. You have to sell what people are buying. I will tell you Savage Finance, which is four months old. Yes, yeah, four months old has made more AdSense money in four months and understand the first two months it wasn't monetized has made more AdSense money than a year of the dominant male two months so I know that you got to sell what people are buying because see this is one of the things with dancing with the devil there's what people should be doing and there's what people want to do and what they want to do sometimes isn't in their best interest so i'm still going to keep the proper educational tone of savage finance i'm not going to compromise my principles but i am going to talk about these things because they are part of personal finance and one of the things i've seen with many personal finance channels is that they'll pick a lane there are some personal finance channels that are 100 percent about investing they don't talk about budgeting they don't talk about credit they don't talk about how to make money it is 100 percent about there there's a few channels that have grown rather large that all they talk about is dividend investing that's it they don't talk about nothing else and i have seen that you know, after a year of talking about dividend investing, I've seen people try to stretch their content and it ain't working because one of the things that I know, and I'm going to start this program, um, probably July is I'm going to start getting some different kind of viewers because I know that many of you who go to Savage Finance from this channel are only really interested in the LLC stuff only interested in the how to make money stuff and you're not necessarily interested in the stock market which I feel the stock market is going to be something where it's going to keep crashing but I believe the Fed is going to continue to prop up the stock market from now to infinity and it's going to crash it's going to have bad days it's going to have good days but overall the market is going to grow and there are going to be more companies that will do IPOs. There will be more stocks to buy and it will be a good opportunity if you are educated. If you're not educated, you can lose your money because I was watching this one channel that talks about option investing and stuff. And one of the things is that many of these channels speak to the small investor. Like if you do your research with Acorn, not, not Acorn, Robinhood. The majority of Robinhood accounts are $1,000 to $5,000. This is millennial money. And then when you go to E-Trade, the average account size is 70,000. Then you go to American TD Trade, the average account size is 130,000. So each type of investing platform speaks to a different audience because Robinhood is like, hey, millennials, we need to get in the stock market. This is how this trader ended up committing suicide because he got into some exotic investment products he didn't fully understand and he lost $730,000 to the point that he got so depressed that he committed suicide. So part of personal finance and getting that stuff and getting you up to tune is to give you honest information about what's going on. Like 
you know, I've talked about it on this channel before. I used to be in the stock market and my portfolio was 1.5 million, not because I was a really good stock picker. It was at this point I was living on 50% of my income and I was just dumping my other half of income straight into the market because I was putting so much money in the market. That's why my portfolio was looking so juicy. It wasn't because of appreciation or, you know, I didn't like do badly, but this is why as a teacher about personal finance and making money, I can tell you from personal experience, you're going to make more money starting a business or a service business than you will investing unless you get into something extremely risky as options trading. And there's this guy that's his, his channel is called in the money. He gives tutorials about option trading and he actually speaks the truth because he talked to, he, he actually did some opening scene where all of these people who were doing options and tradings where their accounts are blowing up. And essentially if you're not part of the investing world, when your account blows up, that means when you lose money. And he was just showing up this one guy, he, he was down like 200,000. This other guy was down 20,000. Their account literally blew up because option trading, unless you know exactly what you're doing, is very, very risky. And there are many people who give you false confidence, like, well, I can do option trading but they've been trading six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. And they've, they're, they've had many accounts that have blown up and they will not tell you that they've had accounts blown up because the average options trader, the average day trader, the average Forex trader, before they become good, they usually blow up many accounts, which means they lose money. And no one is telling you that. Can you make money with Forex? after you've learned and you've developed a system yes you can can you make money with day trading after you develop a system and you know what you're doing yes you can can you make money with options traders you can make a ton of money with options traders option trading if you know what you're doing and a little later i'm going to run some tests on savage finance with options trading forex because the thing is, I want Savage Finance to be about all things personal finance. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of folks out there. Y'all lazy. It's like, I want to do Forex. I don't want to serve anyone. I don't want to build any business. But let me go ahead and give you some numbers. If you were to start a service business, let's say the year is 2020, you're the murder hornet. You started your service business in 2020 in your first 90 days, you made $2,000. Then as you got more acclimated, as you became better with your service business and running your business and marketing your business, you got to where you were making $2,000 a month, 2000. So your first year, you clear about 20 K. Then your second year, you clear 30 K. Then your third year, you clear 40k then your fourth year you clear 40 45k then your fifth year you clear 50k okay five years and you've made two hundred and forty thousand dollars just five years that is more money than you can make in the stock market in 20 to 30 years why Let's talk about it. I have a video on Savage Fund. Your income is a lever. The lower your income, the smaller your lever. So here's the thing, and this is where most Americans have an income problem. Over half of America makes less than $33,000 a year, which means over half of America has an income problem. Regardless of how thrifty they may be, like, let's talk about everyone's favorite financial YouTuber, Graham Stephen or Stephens, so whatever his name is. Everyone's looking like, well, he's super thrifty. That isn't the reason that he has money. It, the reason he has money is he makes $1,063 well, $1, per month from YouTube, which opens up 
because he can go out and buy real estate at retail prices because he has $2 million a year coming in from YouTube, which affords him all types of things. And then many people are like, well, Graham is so cheap. And really, this is what he tells you because I've seen on YouTube, uh, Matt Delavella, D Matt, I think it's Deveda, Matt, whatever his name, he has a channel that talks about minimalism. There are certain trends that do very well on YouTube. Being pathologically cheap does well on YouTube. You hear people, I'd rather have a million bucks in the bank. I'd rather have the option to buy a Ferrari but never buy it because I'm pathologically cheap. And this is something that he tapped into. Like, you know, he has a rental property where someone, he lives in a duplex and someone else on the duplex is paying the mortgage on a duplex so he gets to live rent free. He buys you shirts and everything. And that's how you, no, 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 no. If Graham Stevens wasn't getting $160,000 per month from YouTube, he wouldn't be living the way that he living. And this is one of the things that you've got to understand because being pathologically cheap, let's say you made $33,000 a year and you were super thrifty. You save your money, you clip coupons. Regardless of how cheap you are, you're only going to be able to save X amount of money because there's, there's not a lot of money to begin with. But when you're making, like, let's say you make $250,000 a year and you choose to live on $40,000, which means that you have six figures to put into investments. In a matter of five years, you would be a millionaire from your investments because you put so much into it. Five years. But let's take this same person who makes $33,000 a year and they're pathologically, pathologically cheap. They cut every corner, they clip every coupon. They could be putting money in the markets for three decades and they would not be a millionaire. Wouldn't be a millionaire. Yet this person who makes $250,000 can get to the millionaire status in five years. It's the income. Your income is a lever. I know, and we're, we're, we're about to have this, this talk about the average man because I get hit up in email. I, you know, it's like, what do you got for the average man? I have nothing for the average man. See, when you tell me that you're looking for tactics, trips and tricks and tools, you're telling me that you don't want to do anything to enhance your life. You don't want to put forth no effort. You don't want to start any business. You're looking for a hack that can expand and make your standard living much better than it is right where you are. And it, I'm here to tell you, homie, it, it, it ain't going to happen. You need to get out the car, homie. You need to get out the car and go into the store and make some moves, homie because it, it ain't gonna happen, homie. It ain't gonna happen. But, you know, this dancing with the devil thing is pretty epic right now. Because like I said, the live stream this morning was talking about what is happening in July. And July is gonna be a really pivotal month for the country because I predict that Congress will not extend the $600 per month deal. I do feel that they will get together for another stimulus package in July and the checks will be cut in August or September. I do feel that that's going to happen. Also, if Congress doesn't do something for the rising wave of evictions, which will then be followed in 2021, with the rising wave of foreclosures and the crashing of the real estate market. I feel the crashing, the real estate market is going to crash in 2021. You're going to have high unemployment. We're going to have millions of businesses closed. We're going to have the end of the forbearance. And yes, in July 1st, now that they have entered into where a person can now put the payments to the back of the loan, but this is for people who enter into the forbearance program after July 1st. So everyone else that entered into the, for, the forbearance program before, 
you're going to have to deal with those rules. And I guarantee you, just like go back to 2009 when the, there was supposed to be all these loan modifications where 4 million people applied for loan modifications and only three to 4,000 people got them. I think we're going to experience that scenario. So if you got cash, if you want to dance with the devil, 2021 is going to be the year. You're going to be able, if, you, if you're looking to buy a house, unless you absolutely have to buy a house and compete with people, because right now inventory is dramatically reduced because many people are just like, I'm not about to play these games. I don't want to deal with the Rona. I don't want these folks up in my house and they are not putting their houses on the market. This is why the inventory problem is what it is because the number of people who can buy a house has been greatly reduced. So this is why you've got people in certain zip codes literally fighting over houses, multiple offers because inventory has been greatly reduced and these people have to buy a house. They're in a situation where they got to buy a house. So that's the only reason, but 2021, six months from now, boom, it's going to crash. We're going to have a, and if Congress doesn't do something on both these fronts, we're going to have economic bombs, evictions, and I, man, my heart goes out for anyone that gets evicted because this sets up a nasty chain of consequences where things go from bad to worse because like I said, van life, people will be buying vans and living in RVs and stuff because they will not be able to be able, they won't be able to rent any place. You, you got to understand that when, once you get an eviction, it is easier to have your car repoed and to finance another car. You can have your car repoed in January and in July, you could be riding around in another car or finance at a car dealership. It is not like that for people who get evicted. It follows you around. So this is going to create another crisis within a crisis for the people who get evicted. And for the people like you get foreclosed on. I don't really know from a landlord standpoint, which is worse that you got foreclosed on or you got evicted. I don't know. I don't know if they treat them the same. Someone can chime in in the comments and let me know how those things are looked at. But hey, here we are, man, it's 2020 year of the murder hornet year of the Rona year of high unemployment year of high business closures. This year has just been probably one of the worst years on record for the average person. But for the hustlers, this is one of the best years ever. If you a hustler, if you got your hustle on, if you got the can do attitude, if you got the hustlers mindset, oh, this year is great. You making money hand over finish. It's like you got a printing press in your garage. So make a choice, become a hustler. So with that, go below, get 30 days to 2,500 in the hustler's mindset. I will be giving you these courses to help you get your hustle on. Go ahead and do that. Do that. Do that. And I will see you guys in the next video, which should be right about here.